And this is the best where the music ends up. <laughs> On stalls like this. So you get the best. Best of the best. And you get offers like this, look. CD, one ninety nine each. Six for a tenner. You know they're fucking bootlegs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really find it um, not amusing, I find it fascinating that I walk into some of my English friends' house, houses and um, just because I'm coming round or whatever, they put the bloody incense on, don't they? <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why do they do that? Why? I'm only coming for a cup of tea, love. <laughs> you don't have to get the incense out. <laughs> but they do, I don't know why. My father um, was one of six brothers and he was the only brother who came to England to study. In 1953, and he used to wear a turban and most of the people at that time, when they saw an Indian man, I mean most of them hadn't seen an Indian man before, but when they saw an Indian man with a turban they used to say, oh, are you a Maharaja? <laughs> so, uh, and he says, he, he, sometimes I think, I'm, I'm sure he's he just uh, allowed them to believe that he was a Maharaja. <laughs> and then the other side of the coin was that um, he was studying at college and during the Christmas period he had to earn some money. So he got a job with the post office delivering some Christmas parcels. He told me that he, went, he knocked on somebody's door with a parcel and a little old English lady, she opened the door and when she saw him, she fainted. <laughs> <laughs> because she'd never seen anything like that before. You know, a man with a, like a beard and a turban. She just fainted. She, she didn't know what had happened. So he said, I decided at that time to, um, to cut my hair. You know, people, uh, they couldn't, many people couldn't accept the Indian people at that time. And also, many people can't accept Indian people now as well. <laughs> I don't know if you can call Great Britain great anymore. You should just call it Britain, because the greatness always represents uh, war and exploitation and killing and murder. Uh, so. Well, obviously, I've been living here all my life, and I think that there's certain aspects of it which I'm grateful for, because being very fortunate, being able to travel around the world, and especially to Pakistan and India and Africa, I realise that you know we we actually have a lot of luxuries, but there's also a lot of realities, psychological realities, um, which are very unjust and to think that we live in a part of the world which is assumed to be civilized uh, the kind of injustice that is, is is put against you for the color of your skin or what religion you are is absolutely for me unacceptable <laughs> brought me across, me and my brother, to England and we went straight to Bradford which was, where, uh, which was a place where my father had actually first gone to and um, there was a lot of jobs, uh, in, you know, all the rubbish jobs were available to all the immigrants and uh, it, you know, for me I think Bradford represents, represents a place where, you know, where our parents have come here and we have colonised without any murder, without any uh, exploitation. Uh, we've colonised certain towns in Britain for our own. <laughs>
right, slight problem. Slight problem, okay. The his brother and his friend, who both got the keys to the studio, have disappeared. So we're just gonna go to a pub and keep trying to get them. Yeah, we'll go to a pub if you don't mind. I mean, you've you've got time, haven't you? You sure? Yeah. My European brothers and sisters, please wait. I was born in Hammersmith, which is London. Grew up in the Asian community for the formative first formative years of my life. I then ended up in Surrey and Hampshire. Surrey and Hampshire are in many ways the most English places in Britain you can imagine. We're talking even in the 21st century, even in this age of the internet and technology and, and the global village, these places are still pure English, old English. And that's where I spent nearly all my school years. So being an Asian grew up in Britain and ending up there where I was an alien, a total alien. Uh, my culture was uh, nothing. It was uh, nothing uh, next to uh, English culture, which was always reinforced by the area where the politicians were purely English, where the school system was purely English, where uh, not even English, Western. You know that whole belief that the West is the best and the best of the West is the British way of life. That's what was being forced into my head. More importantly, forced into the people I was in school with. So I, ha I grew up in this atmosphere of complete uh, celebration and I idolization of the Brits, of, 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 of English culture, and, and, and also in the, the complete derision, the complete crapness, the complete uh, uh, um, second third, fourth rateness of the Indian culture. time is a new generation, it's a new, it's a new religion, it's a new culture, made up of many religions, many cultures all together. So maybe now it's new, but in, in many years to come that would be the normal thing.